Yeah, hey everybody, this is Marty Mangello at the United States Presidential Service Center. Uh, coming to you from having served six presidents now. And Dr. David Evans is doing a fantastic job with the PIC TV network. Uh, be sure to check out all the offerings on PIC TV. Go crazy, you know, hit up about 10, 20, 30, 40 channels. Uh, the more support, the more watching, the more it grows, the better it does. And it is doing good, isn't it? It's a great thing that we all need more of in this world. Thank you so much. And don't forget, think PIC TV. <laughs> Hello everybody, this is David Evans from Washington, D.C. I have a special guest on today, and he loves Aretha Franklin. It is my friend, David. David, welcome to the Big TV Network, sir. David, it's so great to be here. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to be on your network and to just share some love with the public. I really appreciate it very much. Thank you. Man, you love Aretha Franklin, man. That's one of the greatest authors, uh, greatest singers and artist of all times. Yes, she is. She's, she brought a lot of love to the world. She would never be forgotten. You know, I want everybody to know you're watching the Pick TV Network live right now from Washington, D.C., and all the way to uh, Colorado. And I'm excited about my good friend David being on today. So we're going to spotlight him. You're going to find out about him, America, about what he loves, what he does. And we're going to have some, uh, some fun at the end of this show. Uh, David, the spotlight is on you, and I want the world to know um, that, um, man, just hearing about the, your accomplishments um, is breathtaking, man. You um, have been on television before. This is not your first time on TV, doing some amazing things, ABC, NBC, Fox 5. Uh, you're a book author, uh, you're an entrepreneur. You're doing some amazing things. Um, in the world today and i'm just honored for you to be on pick tv network what a blessing it is for you to be here today thank you likewise i appreciate it very much yeah man you. I, you know and you know i was talking to um some people today and i was like what a blessing it is when you meet new people and it seemed like you've been knowing them for life you know and that's the way i i feel about you dave when i when i heard about um you man and um your accomplishments, man, being from Colorado, um, a brush of death. And I think about, man, uh, five books. And again, you've been on N ABC, NBC, Fox 5, CBS. And, you know, you did a presentation at the United Nations and you knew New York City, a, a transformational speaker, a coach. Um, amazing. So let's get into these questions today. The spotlight is on you. Tell us about your second chance that life at life and what happened you know it was one of those crazy days where you think everything is going to be really really smooth and god throws a little curveball at you so it was back in 2008 all the markets had crashed i was in my hometown of telluride working in real estate and i thought man i really need to go like figure out what i'm going to do next because you know the whole world essentially was crumbling down at that point in time especially my career and so i went over to new mexico to visit some ancient anasazi ruins and it's called Chaco Canyon, New Mexico. It's one of the most sacred Anasazi ruins in North America. And I just went there to have some quiet time, some prayer time, meditation, and really like figure out what was the next logical step for my life. And what happened is just unbelievable. You know, I went there, I set the intention of wanting to find a new direction for, for, you know, for my life. And you know, be careful what you ask for, because while I was hiking, I was on the upper plateau of the Mesa there. I was walking a, along a rock cliff and never saw it coming. As I was hiking, a rock dislodged from the cliff, whacked me on the head right over here, knocked me out. And that led to a five-year journey 
of reinventing myself. It took me nearly five years to get back to my baseline, but I learned so much about life through that experience. And, you know, it's like when you ask for, you know, a reset in life, when you're looking for a new direction, you never know how it's going to come. You know, if you're a person of faith or if you have bigger vision for yourself, you never know how it's going to come. But this rock literally just showed up. And a lot of people say, man, that must have been, you know, really bad luck to get hit in the head by a rock. And I think, well, you know, at the time it felt like it was, but when I look back now, I couldn't imagine having a different life than I have now because the lessons I've learned from that experience, the people I've been introduced to, and, you know, it was really, really good luck. And some people say, man, what are the odds of being hit in the head by a rock while hiking the desert? And I think to myself, well, apparently they're pretty good because it happened to me. So, so it was a difficult time in my life, but really that put me on a journey that has really brought me to this point in time where I'm sitting here right now, able to share with you, David. So, you know, that was my transformational moment amongst other things in my life as well. But that was really the big aha moment. Amazing, man. You know, when I see you on... Woo! Amazing story, man. How, how God gives us a second chance, man. And uh, how you received a second chance. And you didn't just take it lightly. You took something and did something with it. Uh, that's an amazing blessing uh, for, for you to bounce back and um, make sure that um, the world has, a, that your story didn't end right then and there. You know, you made sure that you continue to, to live on. Now tell us how did it change your life and what core life lessons that you learn? You know, that's a really good question. I appreciate you asking. So I'm, I'm gonna take you back for a moment during that day. So after I uh, realized, after I woke up and realized that I was injured, you know, I was in a regular national park. I wasn't anywhere dangerous. But what happened was I ended up having to do a self-rescue. It was so hot that day that there was no one else around to rescue me. Everyone had already left the trail. And so I ended up literally hiking through the desert by myself, holding my hand and head, bleeding, concussed. And when I first started hiking, I didn't quite know which direction to go. I did grow up in the mountains, so I had some first responder training. But I looked down and I saw these footsteps in the sand. And I decided to follow those footsteps in the desert because I assumed, you know, maybe they'll lead me to a trailhead or something. And so that actually ended up being the name of my first book, Footsteps After the Fall. But I had the most incredible experience walking through the desert. It was the proverbial walk through the desert experience with God. It was really amazing. So the core lessons that I learned from the experience really stemmed from that walk through the desert. It was the first time in my life I had to accept 100% responsibility for my life. There was no one there to rescue me and there was no one to blame. And we live in a world right now where people want to be rescued and people are too easy to blame other people in other situations for their problems and not willing to accept responsibility. And, you know, I believe one of the most important spiritual lessons we can learn for ourselves, which was really what landed with me really, really hard during that day, was if you want to improve your life, any aspect of your life, you have to accept 100% responsibility for your life. You have to stop blaming. You have to stop being a victim. And you have to find that humility and that place in your heart where you can pay attention to spirit and realize, you know, we ha all have gifts. And unless we, you know, take the time to discover those gifts, we're wasting our lives. And so personal responsibility was really, you know, one of the main lessons that I got out of that entire experience. And it was, you know, it was a God moment that day. You know, there was a moment there where I made it through the desert. I got to an upper plateau where I was expecting people to rescue me and there was no one there. And I had a moment where I just, I thought my life was going to end. I mean, I was literally like, it was so hot out. The blood was like cake thick on my face. I could barely see out of my eyes. And I fell to the ground and I surrendered. I, I literally just, I let go of my life. And I thought it was going to end that day. Like I thought birds were going to come in and eat my eyeballs while I was still alive. And I was just in a fetal position on the ground, you know, surrendering. There's a difference between quitting and there's and surrendering. Surrendering is when you still believe that something might help you, but it's out of your control. There's a higher power. But I, so I just surrendered. It was possible that I would die that day. And then something started breathing me. I felt like something took over my body and my spirit and kept telling me to get up, get up. Your life's not over. And so I slowly got up and I continued my hike out of there. And uh, that day was a miracle because I, I got in touch with a, a part of my spirit and faith that I had never experienced before. So personal responsibility and also realizing that, 
you know, you don't have to rely on your own strength at, you know, during difficult times. There is a higher power that you can lean on to help you get out of difficult situations. So two really big lessons for me. Great question. Thank you. I, I believe the angels, God has angels to protect us and watch over us, you know, uh, when we can't protect ourselves. And here are you helpless in Colorado. Um, I've never been there before, and there's people watching this broadcast like me who've never been to Colorado. Can you just tell us about the mountains that's there? You know, tell us about that scenery, this, this about Colorado in general. Yeah, Colorado is really beautiful. I live in a, a small town called Telluride, which is exceptionally beautiful. It's a, The town is at like 8,000 feet elevation, but it's surrounded by mountains that are upwards of 11 and 12,000 feet. And there's some 14,000 foot peaks in the area as well. So you're in a box canyon, which is basically a dead end canyon. And there's just beautiful mountains everywhere. It's a historical mining town. It's also a ski resort. But it's one of those places where you feel so connected to nature because you're literally surrounded by nature. You know, some parts of Colorado, like Denver, are not mountainous. But as soon as you get into the Rocky Mountains, it's breathtaking, you know, the, just the natural beauty is it's hard to imagine. You have to look at pictures, you know, look up Telluride, Colorado. It's absolutely stunning. Love it here. And I'm grateful to be here. So thank you. I'm, I'm going to thank you for being on Pick TV Network today. The spotlight is on David from David and David. We, we have the same <laughs> name. And, uh, and before the show is on, we made the birth of a brand new show, David and David. <laughs> <laughs> David, I, I want to t tell everybody, what is the most important decision a person can make? I love that question because it took me a long time to realize that, you know, there's so many decisions we have to make every single day in our lives relative to our spiritual beliefs, our family, our career, you know, our health, you know, you know, relatives. There's so many things that we could really be focusing on. But what I learned through this, you know, this whole experience of recovering from a head injury and reinventing my life is the single most important decision we will ever make is the people we choose to associate with, the people we allow in our lives. And the reason I believe that is, you know, you've probably heard this before, but we're, our life is the sum total of the five people that we spend the most time with. And this gets back to the original thought I had earlier about 100% uh, responsibility. If you don't like the direction that your life is going, part of the way that you accept responsibility for your life is to level up your relationships. Make sure the people that you're spending time with are helping you to learn and grow and challenging you to become a better person, helping you to grow in your faith and your dreams and your vision for life. Because you know, if you're hanging out with you know seven people that are negative and really not contributing to life, eventually you're going to be the eighth person, right? Because people rub, we all rub off on each other. And so if you want to move your life in a different direction, if you want to level up and really make things happen, if you have a bigger vision for yourself, whether it's spiritual or career, you know, any area of your life, you really have to examine the people you're associated with because literally people rub off on each other. And it's, you know, I believe very, very strongly in mentors. So when I say the people that you surround yourself with are extremely important, Part of what I mean is if you want to do something big with your life and even small, find mentors, find people that have the values that you have and that have been to the places where you want to go so they can show you how to get there with the least amount of resistance and the most amount of faith and the most amount of accuracy. Because mentors will get you there in a, a way that you can't get yourself there on your own. And the other side, the other side of the coin is we all have people that are speaking into our lives. But a lot of the times we're listening to the wrong people. You know, we're, you know, just because we're listening to friends and family, a lot of people in our lives have really, really good intentions, but they may not be the right person to give us advice in a specific area of our life. And so you can have multiple mentors in life. You can have mentors for spiritual growth, for a career, for health and wellness. And so, again, the most important decision I believe a person can make is the people they choose to associate with. So thanks for asking that question. It really it guides my entire life. I appreciate that, David. Thank you. No, you and everybody watching right now, you're watching the Pick TV Network. We on uh, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch on Pick TV Network channel 1000, and on the Pick TV Network Spotlight channel. And those of you who are chatting in, we see your chats coming in. Um, and we're gonna take a commercial break, and we're gonna come right back with David some more. Don't touch that dial. You can also again get in touch with this great man and hear some more about what he does on instagram the real david strauss there is right there folks 
You can see him. We're going to take a commercial break. Don't touch that dial. You're watching the Pick TV Network. We'll be right back after this. all been hurt at some point even abandoned many of us have done the hurting ourselves we get to the point where we don't trust anyone nor do we feel worthy of being loved by anyone then there's that one person who just doesn't give up on loving you their love is unconditional their love stays long enough for you to heal. And then they promise to never leave. That's love you can count on. God's love. Everybody, we're right back here in Washington, D.C. with the spotlight on Colorado with a man with my same name, folks. His name is David. We're spotlighting and hearing his story on Pick TV Network. David, can you tell us what did your childhood shape or how did your childhood shape the person that you have become? You know, that's a really, really powerful question. And what I want to preface it with is, you know, we all have a story. Our story is the journey of our life. And for a lot of people, their story has been one of struggle and, you know, overcoming struggle and triumph and finding triumph, you know, from, from victim to hero. And I was one of those lucky people that had a very, very difficult childhood. And I chose to surround myself with the right people along the way, which helped me actually not take my own life. It was very, very dark for a long time there. You know, we all have kind of a, a, a dark night of the soul experience where things can be really, really bad. Well, that was my childhood. My mother became very ill at a young age. I, mean, I was 13 when she went into the hospital. She was diagnosed with a brain tumor and they did surgery. This was in the 70s. And unfortunately, this well, the, sur the surgery went well, but they gave her radiation therapy. And unfortunately, the radiation therapy fried her brain and she went into a coma for the last year or so of her life. And my entire family fell apart. You know, I'm just a kid trying to make sense of life. And so I ended up running away from home. I ran away from home at the age of 15 and 100% never went back. And literally I, I put myself through high school. I put myself through college. I worked full time while I was in high school. I worked at restaurants, I did construction. I did anything I could. Cause in the back of my mind, I, I just wanted my mom to be proud of me. I think the love for my mother is was really the driving force for me. And it didn't mean I didn't have a lot of pain. I, you know, a lot of the, the pain from my childhood, uh, I kind of buried it like we all do. Like who wants to deal with the pain of a loss of a mother? It was very, very tragic. The way the whole thing went down, the way my family fell apart. And moving on my own, you know, at a young age, literally, I just, I was looking for role models constantly because, you know, I wanted people to show me the right path to life. And I made a lot of mistakes like all of us do. I made a lot of bad choices, but I kept learning from them. And, you know, what I realized is, you know, it's okay to make mistakes, just learn from them. They're not really mistakes if you learn, they're just stepping stones to get you closer to the best version of yourself. And so for many years, I, I really buried that pain about losing my mom. 
I, I, part of me felt very neglected. There was some emotional abuse that, you know, I'd rather not go into right now, but I, I talked about it in other uh, venues. But, you know, I carried a lot of beliefs up until my 40s when the rock hit me in the head that I, I wasn't loved. I didn't deserve love. No one loved me. I felt very abandoned. And I, I had a, a really good personality and I, I did a lot of crazy things so I could figure out my, my path in life. I went bungee jumping and skydiving. When I was 21, I hitched, hiked uh, 25,000 miles across Australia, New Zealand. Back in the in the 90s, I, I excuse me, in the 80s, I hiked a mountain called Aconcagua. It's a 23,000 foot peak in Argentina and Chile. And I was always looking for love and trying to make sense of my life, but I was looking everywhere except for in my own heart and mind. And when that rock hit me in the head and almost killed me that day, what I realized is the longest journey we are ever going to take is from our head to our heart. And I spent a big chunk of my life not liking myself and not loving myself. And I was looking for love in all the wrong places. And I think a lot of us do that. And that rock really reset me. It helped me get on the path of making sense of my childhood. You know, when you're a runaway, it's not because things are going well. It's because things are not going well and you don't think there's any other you know, choice to really make sense of your life. And luckily, I, I found some really, really great people in high school that kind of took me under the wing and mentored me and, and helped me make sense of life long term. And some of them are still in my life right now, very close people. So what I would say is, you know, whoever's watching this right now, if you had a very difficult childhood or in, in a dark place in your life right now, I know it's difficult, but you really, really want to get into your little prayer box and, and ask, you know, show me the lesson. You know, show me the message in this mess. There's always a message hiding in the mess in our life. And if we just have enough faith to be still and to realize that the things that happen in our lives are not personal, they can help us grow and become the best version of ourselves. My stepfather told me, you know, before my mom died, he said to me, I want to give you some advice that I, I hope gives you strength. He said, I don't want you to ever think that your problems are any better or any worse than anyone else's. They're just yours. And if you learn how to deal with them, you'll become a stronger person. And so I've never compared my problems to anybody else's. I've always thought these are my problems and it's up to me to figure them out. And every time I have that courage and I take that step of faith to uh, you know, work through my difficulties, I always come out a stronger person. And that's what I encourage everyone to do. That's part of my theme of self-responsibility is like just because bad things don't happen or are happening, it doesn't mean that they're going to stay that way. Usually difficulties are a prelude to success. There's usually an opportunity behind every challenge. So that's my story. Tough childhood like we all have, but I surrounded myself with the right people that helped me make sense of it. So thank you. I, that's a, a tough question, but I appreciate it. No, that was amazing. You know, just to have you on here today to talk to the world on the Pick TV Network, the spotlight is shining bright from Washington, D.C. to Colorado. And I'm so proud, you know, of you sharing your story uh, but for a lot of people who are watching, can, can you talk about um, uh, what is the secret to happiness? Oh, boy, you know, that that was one of those questions that, you know, I, would, I, would, I was asking myself that for like 30 years. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to know the secret to happiness. I can tell you what it's not, <laughs> and then I'll tell you what it is. We are all running around this planet thinking that we're going to find happiness you know, through other people, through substances, through adventure, you know, we do, we'll do all these crazy things. Like, like I mentioned a few moments ago, I was climbing mountains, jumping out of airplanes, bungee jumping, rafting, rock climbing. I mean, it, I did all this fun stuff, but underneath all that fun, I was really trying to like find happiness. Like, will this make me happy? That was the constant question that was running in the back of my mind. Will this make me happy? And again, you know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, the shortest distance we're ever going to travel is from our head to our heart. And one day I had an epiphany. There is no place that you can find happiness outside of your own heart and mind. And the secret to happiness is to do what you enjoy. What makes you happy? You know, there is no secret to success. If you ask 10 different people the secret to success, they'll tell you their version of the secret to success based on their life experiences. And that's the same with happiness. If you're looking for happiness, you have to ask yourself, what fills your heart? What makes you feel 
joyful. And there's a difference between happiness and being fulfilled. Happiness is kind of like a momentary feeling. Like you, you can be happy in the moment, but maybe 10 minutes later, you're not happy. And so the secret to happiness really is to design and build a life that is fulfilling to you, that meets all your needs, you know, emotionally, spiritually, socially, family-wise, community. So happiness and fulfillment are tied together. So if you're looking for happiness, what I'd say is happiness is the byproduct of living a fulfilling life. And a fulfilling life is a life with purpose. So, you know, your purpose in life isn't something that you have to search for. Your purpose in life is something that's going to find you. I don't think you can look for it because if you're looking for it, you're telling yourself you don't know what it is or you don't have it. I believe our purpose in life is to explore our humanity, to discover the best version of ourselves. And, you know, you might express that through volunteering, through spiritual work. You know, there's so many different ways that you can explore that and express that. But happiness, ultimately, I believe, is the byproduct of living a fulfilling life, a life of purpose and meaning. And for me, that means contributing to others. And since I got a second chance at life, I have dedicated 100% of my life to improving the lives of others, to helping them learn from the you know my near-death experience, from my faith, from my choices, my actions, you know, learn vicariously through me or other people who have made it through difficult times. So happiness is a byproduct. Do what makes you happy, but more importantly, do what makes you feel fulfilled. Thanks for another great question. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. Wow. Um, you know, as we get ready to get into to this next one, I got to play some Aretha Franklin for you because you love Aretha Franklin. This is one of your favorite people on the planet. So, um, yeah, this is one of her one of her one of her big hits too. And while we playing that day, tell everybody how they can get in touch with you, sir. Yeah, you know, I really appreciate that. You know, I, I'm all about connections. I really, I want to make a difference in the world and I'm doing everything I can. The, the best way is through uh, Instagram and you can just private message me on Instagram, Real David Strauss, it's right up there on the screen. But also if you want to, you know, have a little more chat with me one-on-one -on -one, uh, um, tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm kind of doing a little open Zoom for anyone that wants to say hello. And if you want to, it's going to go for an hour. It's going to go from 11 Pacific time till 12, and which I think is two until three Eastern time. So if you wanted to like be in front of me one-on-one -on -one tomorrow and ask some questions for an hour, you can reach me. Uh, just send me the, the word PIC TV, P-I-C-T-V, and text it to 571-200-8195, 571-200-8195. And you can meet with me in person. I'd love to ask you questions about you know, faith and love and and gratitude and you know i would love that but more importantly you know i'm always accessible through uh, instagram and you know ask me any question you want i'd love to you know be connected well wow, that's that's huge dave you know um we have an audience a lot of people don't know that we are on in brazil france colombia mexico panama paris peru argentina egypt uh, Canada, Ireland, West Africa, United Kingdom, Australia, Belgium, United States, through Roku. Roku is the number one streaming app in the world. And through um, Roku, we have interpreters. Once I learned that and they told me that, they sent me information that we on in all of these countries and with, with interpreters, this is big. So, you know, when, once you go over overseas, uh, you know, Dave, you may say, I've seen your show. <laughs> I've seen you on Pick TV Network, yeah. and I'm always excited about, uh, you know, when people come on our network and they they seeing our shows and programs. And, uh, you know, you did a, a, a wonderful job today, Dave. I'm, you, you get five stars in my book, you know, for just just being a, a beautiful person, a, a beautiful human being, you know. Um, and to talk about some of your books, you know, give, give us the title of these, of these books. Yeah, so uh, my uh, my most popular book is called Dancing with Vampires, and I can show it to you on the screen here, Dancing with Vampires. And what I realized during my recovery, you know, I mentioned earlier about the most important decision you make in life is the people you choose to associate with. And so one day I had the epiphany that, you know, I, I always think in terms of pictures and concepts, and I realized that we all have energy vampires in our lives. We have, you know, negative people, toxic situations, toxic relationships. But more importantly, we have this inner vampire. It's our negative thoughts and belief, our self-doubt, 
you know, that conversation with ourselves is very self-defeating. And a lot of that we learned when we were kids. And so when I wrote Dancing with Vampires, I wrote it because I was trying to make sense of this like inner dialogue of mine that was really, really toxic. And I was looking at some of the people in my life and I was like, why are these people in my life? And I looked at some of my other friends and they had amazing people in their lives. And, and so I wrote Dancing with Vampires because it was my way of really developing a concept around the importance of choosing the right people to live your life with and to spend your life with. Like we don't have to dance with vampires and I you know energy vampires. We don't have to dance with energy vampires. We don't have to spend time with negative people, toxic relationships. You know, there is a higher level of standard that we can have for ourselves. And so that's what that book is about. Dance with vampires. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. You can order it at dancingwithvampires.com. My first book is footsteps after the fall. That was kind of like my personal story. I wrote it while I was recovering. It was, it was what I learned. And during that recovery time, really, it's like a, a song from my heart. And I wrote another book called Second Mouse Gets the Cheese, which is really about the importance of you know, surrounding yourself with the right person. You know, you never want to be the first mouse at the mouse trap. You want to, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get that cheese and get your head whacked off. But, <laughs> but you know, Dancing with Vampires is the one that most people love. It's the most popular. So, yeah. You know, I love the twist of that, man, because when you first hear it, you think it's like a demonic book or something, man, when you hear Dancing with Vampires. But then when you twist it, you think about the people who are vampires sucking your blood around you for what they can get out of you, you know, just to scare the whiz side of you. And that's amazing. The way you flipped it is amazing. I got to give you a... That's, that's, that's big right there. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm going to get it, you know, and a, a lot of times we're dancing with vampires, dancing with wolves and sleeping with the enemy. And we don't even know it. No, no, it's true. You know, and, and I, I appreciate bringing up the biblical side of that because it's, you know, it really is true. You know, you can't, you know, you, you have to know whether you're dancing with darkness and we don't do it intentionally or not. But that dark side of the life is very, very tricky and very it, it's easy. It's very sneaky. And I talk a lot about that book in that book about faith. You really have to, you know, if you have darkness in your life, you really have to surround yourself with the right people that are going to help you find that light. It's so important. You have to ha hang out with people of faith. You just have to. Yeah, that's the only way we're going to grow. That's the only way we're going to move higher. You know, um, this is amazing, folks. You've been watching a brand new spotlight with David. He is from Colorado, and I'm from Washington, D.C., the David and David show. It, it, could, it had to be something new on our network going into, uh, you know, the holiday season. You, you, you're you watching this on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, Amazon Live. You're watching this all over the country on Roku and the Pick TV network. We're on the Spotlight channel. We're going to play this over and over and over. We're going to repeat uh, David, we're going to take a break and we're going to come back with some fun. We have fun time. The first time people come on Pick TV Network, we have a fun time. And I want everybody out there watching right now, you're going to be laughing and having a good time with us right after this commercial break. Get something to drink because you're going to be so happy when me and David come back and we're going to have some fun time on the Pick TV Network. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this. It's a beautiful fall evening. The sun is setting. The dog finally stopped barking. Life is good. But inside, there's trouble brewing. And Emma has no idea. Although she feels fine, like her father, Emma is one of the 67 million adults in the US with high blood pressure or hypertension. Just like her radiator that's on the fritz, Emma's heart is working overtime to get the job done. Let's have a look. The heart is the pump in our bodies, delivering blood to the entire system through a set of pipes or blood vessels of all sizes. Smoking, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, physical inactivity, family history, and increased age all contribute to these blood vessels or our pipes becoming less elastic. The more blood our heart has to pump through stiff, narrowing arteries, the higher our blood pressure. When the force of the blood against our artery walls is too high, life-threatening health problems can result. Problems like kidney disease, heart disease, stroke, even heart attack. 
Can Emma get her pressure down before it's too late? Congratulations to the Pick TV network for being one of the top streaming networks on Roku with multiple channels. With Pick TV stars in France and all over the world, shout out to David Evans, the president, and keep watching Pick TV network on Roku. Being one of the top streaming networks on so, congratulations to the Pick TV Network for being one of the top streaming networks on Roku with multiple channels. With Pick TV stars in France and all over the world, shout out to David Evans, the president, and keep watching Pick TV Network on Roku. All right, everybody, it's time for the Pick TV Network fun time. So get ready to laugh. Get ready to smile. We have David on the hot spot today. And we're going to ask him some questions on the Pick TV Network spotlight. And this is fun time where you can laugh and enjoy time with us. Let's get right into it, David, today. Pick TV Network fun time. I got the questions here for you. Now, first of all, I want to ask you, David, do you like hot or cold? I love hot, man. I just, I love heat, man. I just love it. It's cold is okay, you know, but I like being warm. <laughs> wow. And coming from Colorado, man, I'm kind of, you know, I thought it'd get cold up there, Colorado. You know what? Years ago, I, I climbed a 23,000 foot peak that I mentioned Ooh. called Aconcagua, and it was so cold. I promised myself I would never get cold again. It was like 100 below wind chill factor, and I never wanted to be cold again. So I love <laughs> hot water, hot baths, hot showers. <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. Here's number two. Uh, what is your favorite food, breakfast, lunch, or dinner day? My favorite breakfast is always a mixed bowl of berries, and my favorite lunch is like fresh. Freshly cut turkey with cranberry sauce and maybe some avocado. But this is going to sound really crazy, but <laughs> I love SpaghettiOs. Like, I have distinct memories of my mom when I was a kid. But at my birthday parties, she would always serve SpaghettiOs to me and all my friends because we love playing with the O's and everything. And it's just been a comfort food my whole life. I think because I like the SpaghettiOs, but also because it reminds me of my mother. Now, I wouldn't have that as a meal all the time, but it's, it's kind of a comfort food for dinner. <laughs> wow. All right. Number three. What was your first job, David? My first job was a paper boy. Ooh. I had a paper route when I was pretty young. And, you know, I I didn't get much of an allowance. I had to earn my keep right away. And I loved it because a lot of my friends were up in the morning and I played basketball with my friends for a couple minutes when I went to drop off the newspapers. I could say hello to the neighbors and moms would give me cookies. And so it was kind of fun. Yeah, it was good. Wow, that's cool, man. Uh, number four, what was your favorite pet? Uh, well, I have my favorite pets right now are my two dogs, Finley and Giggles. <laughs> 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 wow. Tell me the difference between them. What is the difference? Uh, well, one is the mom of the other one. So it's a very rare breed. They're called Stabby Hoons. It's one of the rarest dog breeds in the world. They're from Holland. And they're just really lovely family dogs. They're hunting dogs, but they're also family dogs. But they are like Velcro. Like they follow me everywhere. No privacy. They follow me to the bathroom. They follow me to the kitchen. They <laughs> They do. They are loving dogs. They just want to be with their person. They, they love humans. They just want to be with their humans. <laughs> wow. So, so the 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 dog is a man's best friend. Is that accurate? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. You know, what's really nice about dogs is, you know, it really helped me with my healing, the, the emotional right. side of healing, because sometimes you just, you know, our need to express love is it's our nature. And if you don't have something or someone to express that love to, it just gets stuck inside of you, you know. But when you have an animal, a companion, you know, there's something about it that opens up your heart and allows you to have that experience of caring for something and also being needed. And I love that about dogs is because they need us just as much as we need them, right? Like, yeah. I don't know who rescues who, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's unconditional love. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. That's beautiful. Um, what is your favorite toy or what was your favorite toy for Christmas? Man, growing up, I was a G.I. Joe boy, man. I love yeah. my G.I. Joes. I love okay. the, the mobile headquarters and the main headquarters. And you know, I, had, I had them all. I had all the G.I. Joes. I just loved that. You know what I loved actually most about being a kid was when we're kids, our imagination is not tainted. That's and so right. We can play with our toys and, and we think that it's real. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real in our mind. So I loved all that stuff when I was a kid. That was great. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Uh, let's go to the next one. What is your favorite music artist or song? Well, we've already played a little bit of Aretha Franklin, which I love. But I also love Little Richard, the song Tutti Frutti. I don't know if you know that song. But Tutti Frutti by Little Richard. Let's see if you can pull that you're going to start something, David. That's a hit. That, that is a hit forever. <laughs> Little Richard's hit forever. Tutti Frutti is it. You get five stars for that. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting points for every one you get right. <laughs> that is big. Number seven. If you could be a star in any movie, what would it be? Well, if it was a cartoon, I would want to be Scooby Doo. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> <good. all> the <laughs> but there's a movie called Circle of Iron, which had a really big impact on my life. And it was it was made after uh, Bruce Lee died, but it was a, about the Zen behind his martial art. It was how he thought as a martial artist mm -hmm. and how he saw light, a life. And so the main character in that movie is Cord, and Cord was a seeking truth. And it was a it's a brilliant movie. It's it's kind of a very very difficult movie to find. But what I loved about it, it was just a sincere, uh, you know, recreation of. We all have this journey that we're on. We're all trying to find truth. And we look everywhere for it except in the right places. And, and I just love the character core because he's he's really seeking truth. And I think we're all doing that. So Wow. I like that. I like that. Now, it, what is your favorite? Burgers, tacos, uh, fish, or chicken? Burgers, 100%. Ever since I was a kid, man, I was all about burgers. Every My parents would take us out to a fancy restaurant, and I'd be like, can I have a hamburger? I mean, all I did was hamburgers. That's all I ever ate was hamburgers. I think it's because I watched the Popeye. Was it yeah. Popeye or was it? Oh, no, it was, uh, what, what was that cartoon? I forget the cartoon. The guy that said, you know, I'll gladly pay you Thursday for a hamburger today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. I remember that one. That's yeah, Bruno or whatever, man. That yeah. was big. Yeah. <laughs> burgers. I like burgers too, man. Um, I can eat, eat, eat a burger at least twice a, a week, man, and, yeah. and make them. Uh, yeah. Especially in DC, they they have a couple of places that you can just eat some of the biggest burgers you ever want to eat. I, I love it. Um, now, number nine, if you could uh, stay in any place for three years, what city or what state or what country would it be? You know, I had I have to think about that for a moment because there's so many amazing places that I would love to go. But I love history and I love ancient ruins. I just think there, there's something about history, and I don't mean modern history, I mean ancient history, that all the wisdom comes from the from the other ages. And so I would choose Israel. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I have friends that uh, spend a lot of time in Israel now and they always want me to go there and and they just tell me how amazing it is, not just because the biblical side of it, but 
just the architectural side of it, the history, the people, I think it would be amazing. Wow. Yeah. I, I love Israel too. I always wanted to go there, you know, uh, being a man of faith and go back and see the historical places where Jesus walked and, you know, the, the pool of Bethesda, you know, and to walk down and to, to, to see a Galilee, to see that with my own eyes, man. And to, just to be able to be in a setting where uh, the Holy Land, you know, yeah. that I, I hope one day before I leave this earth, I, I would be able to go there. So that's, that's five stars. <laughs> All right, David, this is fun time on the Pick TV Network. This is another big one. Uh, if you could have the keys to any car, what would it be? A Bentley or an Aj. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bentleys. I just think they're so classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I, when I go to California where they don't drive, I see all of these Rolls Royce Bentleys out there. Man, I was like, they look like taxis in here. When I come back to Washington, D.C., they driving so much, and I was like, Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah, this is yeah. beautiful. So, it's so. funny because you know I drive trucks. I have a Toyota Tacoma, and I I absolutely love trucks because I just love being high up, and I, I just love the, the mobility that you can go camping, you can bring all your gear and everything. But you know, a Bentley, there's something about it. They're 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 just so beautiful, but they're so subtle. They're nice. Wow. All right, Natalie. These are bonuses. These are bonuses that are not on my script. They're not here. These are bonus <laughs> questions, so um, well, we're yeah, gonna hear, right you're, you're gonna hear him talk from from the cuff in a few minutes, folks. Pick TV Network, fun time with David, David and David. So we hear David. Um, what is the worst job you ever had? Now, once a person said I worked in a funeral home, I had to watch dead bodies every day. What was the worst job you ever had? Tow truck driver. Woo! Yeah, that was rough. That was yeah. Tow truck driver was rough. You know, not just dealing with the cars, but, you know, you know, when people are in crisis mode, they're hard to deal with, especially when they're going somewhere and they think they're going to on their way and then their car breaks down or they get in an accident. And, you know, I, I was a tow truck driver unintentionally. I was in a very bad place in my life financially and emotionally, and I just needed a job. And I was like, well, I guess it's time to tow cars. <laughs> <laughs> it, paid, it paid really well, but, but, you know, the pay was really good, but, it, you know, it wasn't my purpose in life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. This is uh hard one, folks. This he didn't have questions for this one. So so they, they would if um wow, let me think about this one. What is the food that you dislike that most people do like? Mine's is I dislike gravy because I ate gravy morning, noon, and night. My mother and father always cook gravy on everything, and I said, when I get older, I will not eat gravy i hate gravy my wife loves gravy on chicken gravy on um uh, mashed potatoes not me wow you know i've never i have never really thought about a food that i i hate i could tell you the food that i definitely don't, i don't eat any pork any pork products at all wow wow i don't eat pork at all so not because i hate it it's just not doesn't align with my beliefs but i you know i eat a pretty clean diet in general mm -hmm. so I mean, that would be the one food that I just never eat. But I don't like things like, I don't like like lobster or shrimp or crabs. So they, 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 I, like, I like those animals. I think they're cute animals. Or critters, but I just, don't like just don't like it. <laughs> yeah. These are off the cuff questions, folks. Uh, and uh, my name is David, and I look for what in a person? Integrity. Beautiful. Yeah. Any more? Humility. Beautiful. And I also look for like a, a bright light, like a, a bright spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, when you look in someone's eyes, you can tell if they're connected or not. And, you know, some people aren't because they're in a dark place in their life. But, you know, and you can tell that also. But I, I like people that are authentic. I think authenticity, which includes integrity and honesty and humility, I think those are, are are key, you know, because there's a there's a, a force out here bigger than us. And if anyone thinks they're bigger than that force, they don't belong in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing, David. You have won today. Big TV Network, and we gotta find something over here that we're gonna gift you with. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you something special. You 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 did so something amazing. I got to gotta give you the, the gifts of the earphones. The, 
if uh, it's got to give you something. You did so wonderful today on Pick TV Network. Let's get some shots out to some people who are watching, maybe a family member, friend, your mentor, your coach, Lawrence. Who you want to give some shots out today? So uh, Jay Lawrence was one of my mentors for sure, you know, and he is on a mission to help really level the playing field for people financially. He really wants to help break the financial discrimination that's going on on the planet across all people. And also my mentor, Sharon Lecter and coach Michael Burt and so many others, my godfather, uh, uh, Hawkwind, who's been there for me my entire life, my mom, so many people have been there for me. And I think there's one, I wrote this poem years ago in high school when I when I was kind of making sense of my life, but it's three short lines and it kind of sums up my entire purpose in life. And here's how it goes. When you touch a rock, you touch the past. When you touch a flower, you touch the present moment. But when you touch a heart, you touch eternity. And that's what my life is about. I'm here to touch people's hearts so I can make an impression for eternity. That's a blessing, you know. Um, the light is shining, man. It's shining bright and I can see it. The whole world can see it. You know, David, you did a wonderful job the first time on the Pick TV Network. Uh, tell the world how you enjoyed our commercials. It's your first time on. You, you're going to have to do the David and David show because me and you have the same name. So I'm the president of my own network. So there's no way in the world somebody can tell me I can't have a show. You know, so we're going to get ready for the David and David show from Washington, D.C. to Colorado. But tell everybody what you liked about Pick TV. This is your first time on. You know, I love the authenticity of it. You know, there, there's so much programming out there where it's it's over scripted, you can tell. And what I like about this is that you're you're bringing real people into your network. You know, you're showcasing real everyday people who have real stories and are, are trying to make a difference in the world or, or they found their little niche. And I've always believed that, you know, the people that are going to change the world are the everyday people. It's when we wake up and start realizing, hey, you know, there's more of us, you know, we can make a difference in the world. And I love how you're spotlighting just real people. And you're not, you know, it, it's not glamorized. It's just, it's very real and authentic. And, and that's what we need more of. We need more authentic programming that's geared towards making the world a better place. You know, bring, bring people together, putting a smile on people's faces. You know, I got a second chance at life. If I, you know, you're giving me an opportunity to impress other people and by the grace of God, I'm here. And, and you know, I, I appreciate that opportunity to be one of the many people that you're going to spotlight. So thank you so much. Yeah. You know, from, from, well, from tragedy to triumph, you know, for you to survive what you went through and being an accident and coming through and being hit in the head with a rock and bleeding all over, walking and fainting and still living, man. That is huge. It's a blessing from God. And um, a lot of people don't have that second chance. Yeah. 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 You know, it takes courage to walk through the darkness. When, you have a, when you're in a dark place in life, you know, it takes courage and it takes faith. And you have to surround yourself with the right people that get, you know, hold your hand when you, can't, when you don't believe in yourself. And that's what you're doing. I mean, Pick TV is a way for people to get to build faith and, and courage. It's great. Yeah. Pick TV Network. Folks, you're watching a brand new spotlight today. If you want to be a part of our shows and programs, right above David is a QR code. All you have to do is push the QR code and tell you about how you can come on and do a show, a commercial, a short film. We have 100 short movies that you can watch on the Pick TV Network. David, I want to thank you for coming on today. You Five stars for you, sir. Five stars on Pick TV Network. And um, those can watch the repeats again. You can watch this again on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, on the Pick TV Network in your search bar and channel 1000. David, thank you again, sir. Thank you very much. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. This is thank awesome. You again. Thank you. Keep watching Pick TV, folks. Thank you for your time. TV Network, y'all gonna be watching. Hey, TV Network.
Hey, what's up, y'all? Said the Entertainer. I want y'all to check out Pick TV Network. That's right, Pick TV Network. They got 60 free channels on Roku. This is dope. They also started the brand new Coaching World channel at $9.89. So, if you are a content provider, you are a young business with an opportunity to build uh, something, a platform where you can have your own show, do some programming, check out Pick TV Network on Roku. They got over 60 free channels for you to check out and also grow a business. Go and see them now. See the content. See what they have to do. Learn something. Check them out. All right? Pick TV Network. That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Starts to shiver. Worries will come on high. Oh, I've never felt like this before. Got to let it go. When you move abroad, there are some things you can't take with you. But there are some things you just can't leave behind. A lot of the depression I've had has been based around not letting go of people that have used or betrayed me. Today, I'm grateful for letting people go. Walk away from people who put you down. Walk away from fights that will never be resolved. Walk away from trying to please people who will never see your worth. The more you walk away from things that poison your soul, the healthier you will be. Today, I'm grateful for walking away. What are you grateful for? Please share in the comments and click the subscribe button to hear daily gratitude. Be grateful and share this with your friends.